Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, it's kind of a cold and stormy day here in Waco and I got a little uh, research project I gotta do. About a week ago, uh, I attempted to mow my lawn and for some reason I couldn't get the mower to start. Now, initial investigation indicated it was out of gas, but um, so I filled that up, but that didn't seem to start, uh, solve the problem and I couldn't even get the starter to crank. So, I'm kind of going on the assumption that I may have made a mistake last time I used it and didn't fully shut it off and I maybe just drained the battery. So. What I'm going to do, I was already looking at the instructions, and the instructions say that they recommend if you're not going to use the thing for long periods of time, like during the winter and stuff like that, that you do some do certain things to bring it back when you uh, tr start firing it up again in the spring. And one of those things they recommend is put the battery on a charger. And since I need so since I need a charger anyway, I think I'm going to run over to Home Depot because I found something on there online for them that I think will do the job. So we're going to go get a, go get the charger from Home Depot today. We're going to put the mower on the charger and see if that's what our problem is. So while I was at Home Depot, I actually uh, caught up on some of the paint chips. Uh, some of you guys have been sending in paint chips uh, for this bedroom. And so I picked up three new ones today. Um, I also got a little power strip that I'm going to put under the bed. You remember I told you recently that I was having problems because I have so many things plugged into the outlet behind the bed because there's one outlet for each of the controllers for the uh, electric blanket. There's one outlet for this little USB charger thing that's on the uh, bedside table and I'm going to need an outlet for uh, whatever kind of a table lamp or floor lamp or whatever I'm going to put in here. haven't figured that out yet. But I got this thing over, the, over at Home Depot and we're going to put that under the bed and that will uh, free up some outlets. I should get five outlets out of that because this thing will plug into one of them which will have four outlets and then I'll have the fifth outlet that's still on the wall. So that should more than take care of this problem in here. And look who's hanging out in the kitty bed. And Bite's over here all by himself. So this is the battery charger I got. This is the one I saw online. It was about 40 bucks. So you know what? It's a good investment to have it. And if I ever need it for the car, it'll work for that too. So let's uh, bring the lawnmower into the garage and we're going to plug that in. See what we can get the, if we can get that thing to turn over. All right, so I've moved the lawnmower into the garage just so I can work up for it, work with it. Now, ironically enough, it started right up for me this time. So, I don't know, it must have been operator error before. I'm still kind of new to this thing. But I still needed a battery charger. So, you know what, I'm going to put it on the battery charger just to make sure I know how to do it. And we'll, get, we'll let it charge for a little while and uh, we'll go from there. Maybe the lawnmower just decided that it was safe to start up today. It didn't want to do it last week because it knew it had to mow the lawn, but now that it's raining, it knows I'm not going to go out and mow the lawn. It's just a conspiracy. All right, we've got the charger out of the box. It's plugged into the, into the outlet right now, and uh, let's plug it into the battery and see what happens. Now, on this lawnmower, the battery is underneath the seat, so that makes it e uh, good for easy access here. So first thing you obviously got to do with a battery when you're charging it is identify the uh, positive and negative terminals. And generally the positive terminal is the one with the red wire and the negative terminal is the one with the black wire. But you can also see there's a little minus sign there and there's a little plus sign there if you ever, so if you're ever in doubt, definitely check it out. Now whenever I'm doing something like this and hooking up to, the, to a live battery, I actually like to have the charger unplugged. So I've unplugged it right now, just for safety's sake. And according to the directions, you want to hook the, uh, the black terminal up to the negative uh, terminal on the battery first. And I'm going to kind of keep hold of the positive one just so that we don't uh, cause any problems here, accidentally shorting to anything. And then the positive, uh, the, red, uh, the red clamp is going to go to the red battery terminal. Let's go on to that side. That feels like that's a better clamp. All right, so look pretty good. Let's plug it in and see what happens. All right, still here. This is a danger here. You always worry about something like this. You do it wrong and it, and all of a sudden you have a problem. Okay, according to the, uh, according to the, uh, the system here, well, if the clamps are reversed, all of the lights are supposed to blink. So right now it should just be in charging mode. Although I want to read the directions again here just to make sure. Okay, I got to admit I got a little fooled by this thing because right now from this position, the angle I'm looking at, it looks like this light is lit. 
because and that's the the cables reversed one but the truth is you put the thing up and then to look at it straight on and it is just actually charging so that's a good thing that's what we want uh, this should take uh, on a battery like this anywhere from two to five hours for charging So we're gonna let it do its thing and we'll pick this up a little later And honestly since the thing started on its own, it's probably gonna be all right It probably may charge even faster than the, than the two to five hours because the battery is actually technically already charged Now you may recall that I originally discovered when I had the problem with the lawnmower last time that I discovered that the gas tank was empty so I had a little bit of gas in one of my uh, reserve tanks here and I was able to put a little bit of gas in there but I just came back from the gas station I just filled both of these up so I figure while I'm at it I'm going to put gas in the tank too that's pretty easy to do that's just right here under the hood it's good to know that, that I get about two uh two complete yard mowings per tank of gas that's just good reference for the future then I know when to look to make sure it's filled up all the time all right, so while I was at Home Depot, I also bought that power strip uh, to uh, put onto this outlet behind here. Like I said, I've just got so much stuff plugged into it because I've got two electric blanket controllers. I've got the little USB port up here and I'm going to have like a table or a floor lamp. So I got a, just a four, four prong outlet uh, extender box kind of thing and uh, plugged that in. And now I got this all hooked up. So now I can actually go get some sort of a lamp or something for the table. I don't know, like I said, it may go, maybe something I put on the bedside table, maybe something I hang on the wall. It may be put something I put on the floor over there in that corner. I don't know yet. We'll figure out that when we get to it. So I'm still soliciting ideas for paint colors for this bedroom. You still have a few days. The last day to submit your color is October 31st on Halloween day. Uh, because I will pick my finalists on Sunday, uh, November 1st, and we'll then start the voting, and then you'll be able to choose the final colors. So it's not too late. I got these colors already. I've received actually two more emails since I went to Home Depot uh, with two more color suggestions that we're gonna we're gonna try and find paint chips for. So if you have a if you have an idea for what you'd like for this bedroom, you know, keep in mind this is this isn't really black. It's just a very very dark brown. Uh, so earth tones are going to look really good in here. Uh, this is kind of a uh, a brown color, but depending on which way you you stroke it, it kind of gets different colors. So you know, but it's kind of a, a brownish color. It matches the uh, the headboard and the furniture really well. So like I said, this isn't black. Some people think it's black. It's actually just a very dark wood green. So those are your color options. I can work with Sherwin-Williams, with Bear Brand Paint, with Glidden Brand Paint, and with Vaspar Paint. So if you have uh, a color suggestion for this room, you know, send me a photograph of the paint chips that you find. Make sure I can read the numbers so that I have a chance to find it. Uh, and email me those paint chips at escaping the mouse at gmail.com and it's still not too late like i said october 31st is the deadline for getting it in so you still got a few days all right a few hours have passed and this thing now has completed charging and it's now what they call it's now in what they call a uh, maintenance mode i guess what i can do is if i wanted to i could actually leave this thing plugged in all the time and it would just keep the battery up to date i'm not going to really do that i don't think that's necessary and honestly there's uh, like fire risks uh, to do you know to doing that so uh, this will probably be one of those things I use to charge the battery but not necessarily to maintain the battery so uh, it's good to know that this works uh, I think what I'm going to do now is we're going to take this thing off the charger uh, make sure it starts up and uh, drive it back into the backyard back into the shed so I pulled the plug on the charger and now I'm just going to disconnect the terminals one at a time Put the cover back on the thing here so we don't end up getting any dangerous shorts. That's no fun when that happens. And the seat goes back down. All right, so I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.